Are you lost reading a CBC report during rounds? Let me show you how to crack it in just 30 seconds. Hi, I am Dr. Saurabh. Whether you are a final year MBBS student, a new intern or a practicing doctor, CBC report is a report that you will see every single day. In today's video, I will tell you a rapid fire method of six steps so that you can confidently interpret it in just 30 seconds. So let's get started. Before going into the steps, let's see how the CBC report is divided. So CBC report mainly consists of three types of parameters. The first is the RBC parameter, then there are WBC parameters and last is the platelet parameters. These parameters represent the cells that are present in the blood that is red blood cell, white blood cell and platelets respectively. Now let's go actually into the steps. Now let's see the actual steps. So step 1 and step 2 they are related to red blood corpuscles. In step 1 we see hemoglobin. Normally hemoglobin in males is 13 to 17 and in females it is 12 to 15. So if the hemoglobin is less then we call it as anemia. If hemoglobin is more than the normal value then it can be either polycythemia or there can also be dehydration. So this is the first step where we have seen the hemoglobin levels. If there is an anemia then we see the next uh, parameter that is the MCV. So if there is anemia then we see MCV. The normal level of MCV is 80 to 100 femtoliters. If MCV is less than 80, then the anemia is microcytic. If it is more than 100, then we call it as macrocytic. And if it is between 80 to 100, then it is normocytic. Now let's see some examples. Microcytic anemia, the examples are iron deficiency and thalassemia. The examples of macrocytic anemia are B12 or folate deficiency and it is also seen in patients taking alcohol. Examples of normocytic anemia are patients of CKD, acute blood loss and patients with some chronic disease. So these were our first two steps where we have assessed the RBC. Now let's go to our third step. In step 3, we look at one of the parameters that look at the WBC. So, that is total leukocyte count. Total leukocyte count. If the normal level of total leukocyte count is 4000 to 11000. If it is more, that is more than 11000, then it is called as leuco cytosis. What are the conditions where we can see leukocytosis? There are many conditions. One is infection. If there is any inflammation of any kind, it can also be seen in leukemias, certain drugs like steroids and also in allergies. So 
leukocytes uh, leukocytosis can be seen in these conditions if the count is less than 4000 then it is called as leukopenia what are the conditions where you can see leukopenia most common is viral infections here infection i should say bacterial infection in bacterial infection you generally see leukocytosis in viral infection you see leukopenia this can also be seen when there is a bone marrow suppression it can also be seen with certain drugs like methotrexate so this was our third step where we assess the total leukocyte count now we go to our fourth step now friends what we do in the fourth step we look at something called as differential leukocyte count differential leukocyte count the wbc's in the blood are mainly of five types one is neutrophil then lymphocytes then eosinophils then monocytes and then basophils and their respective percentage are given here normally the neutrophils are 40 to 75 percent lymphocytes are 21 to 40 percent monocytes are 2 to 10 percent eosinophils are 0 to 6 percent and basophils are 0 to 1 percent when the neutrophils are increased it is called as neutrophilia neutrophilia is seen in certain conditions like bacterial infection then it is also seen in trauma and with certain drugs like steroids when the lymphocytes are increased it is called as lymphocytosis when we see the lymphocytosis we see it during viral infections also in tuberculosis and CLL this is a type of malignancy where we see the lymphocytosis when the eosinophils are increased it is called as eosinophilia when we see this eosinophilia we see this when there are certain allergic conditions and also when there are certain parasitic infections when monocytes are increased monocytes are increased in chronic conditions and the rise of basophils is very rare there are also certain conditions when the neutrophils are reduced than normal in it is called as neutropenia when neutropenia is seen it is seen in sepsis with certain drugs and in aplastic anemia there can also be sometimes lymphopenia means the lymphocytes are reduced this lymphopenia is seen in main condition is HIV so this is an important step of looking at the differential leukocyte count now we go to our last step that is looking at the platelets so in the fifth step we look at the platelets the normal platelet count is 1.5 lakh to 4.5 lakh when it is less than 1.5 lakh we called it as called it as thrombocytopenia and when it is more we call it as thrombocytosis when we see thrombocytopenia and when we see thrombocytosis so, so thrombocytopenia is seen in dengue idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura 
and it can also be seen in a plastic anemia. Thrombocytosis is seen in infections and certain malignancies. So these are the five steps of looking at the different types of cells that is RBC, WBC and platelets. And the six steps is about the red flag signs. The values that are very important where you should act very fast. So the first is if hemoglobin is less than 6, then that patient urgently needs blood transfusion. If the WBC is more than 1 lakh, then you should suspect leukemia. If the platelet count is less than 20,000, there is a bleeding risk and patient may need platelet transfusion. And if there is a pancytopenia, means the all the parameters are low, then there is a possibility of bone marrow failure and in all these cases, you have to act very fast. So the summary of six steps is as follows. In the first step, we see the hemoglobin that gives us idea if there is anemia or not. If there is an anemia, we see the next step that is MCV. It gives us idea about the type of anemia. Then we look at the total leukocyte count that gives us idea of infection. Then we see the differential leukocyte count that tells us which type of infection is there. Then we see the platelets that gives us idea if there is a bleeding risk or not. And lastly, we see for the red flag signs, the four important parameters uh, which need urgent action. These six steps, each of these steps will require five seconds to assess. And in this way, five into six in 30 seconds, you can assess a CBC report. So this is how you can interpret a CBC report in just 30 seconds. Practice these steps daily on the actual report so that it gets a lot easier for you. If you find today's video helpful, give it a like, share with your friends and subscribe this channel for more clinical insights. And also don't forget to correlate the lab values with the actual clinical picture. Thank you.